<laughs> okay. Hey, it's G. Paul. I want to talk to you about this term microtest. What's the story with that word? Um, I know some of you will already know it, but others have never heard the term before, even if they've been studying about TDD. So it's worth taking a minute to talk about it. Our story begins a long time ago, which is unfortunate because it means I'm getting really old. But back in the late 90s, um, like most of your IL coaches, I was active in the world of TDD and the burgeoning world that was going to become Agile. And, you know, back then, we used the word unit tests all the time, and uh, it, it worked fine for us, even though what we were writing were a particular kind of unit test. And so what happened was we kind of developed this vocabulary. We would say things like um, small unit tests or uh, TDD-style unit tests, or we might say new school versus, you know, old school unit tests. And things went along like this for a while. As Agile began to spread, of course, we turned into coaches, and we began working with people all over the world uh, on how to do things like TDD. And I remember going to a site one time because they, they asked me to come visit. They said, Mike, um, we've been doing TDD for a year and a half now, and you claim it's a productivity tool, but this is a living hell. It's terrible. We can't have it um, because it's eating up all of our time. So since we don't think you're a scam artist, please come and help us with our TDD. So I go to this place, and this was the first of quite a few places that I went to that I had this phenomenon. On the very first day, I asked them, show me one of your unit tests. And they showed me one, and it was this thing. It was like, um, there was like a thousand lines of setup code. And then each individual test ran maybe somewhere between 200 and 500 lines long. And of course, I was shocked. I was blown away. So the first thing I did was I called a meeting, and we got all the developers today, and I said, oh, I love you guys so much. I've never seen a team so disciplined and so energized to be able to do such an awful thing like this for so long. Please, please lay down your burden. We've got better things that we can work on. And so here's what they said back to me. They said, well, you said unit tests. And I said, yeah, unit tests. And they brought me this book. I don't know. It was from like before World War I. And it said what a unit test was. And it was certainly true that what they had written were unit tests, and it was also true that what I had been writing were unit tests, even though those two did not meet at all. That made me want to change things. So what I did was I, I coined the term microtest, primarily to distinguish between things that were unit tests before Agile even got started, um, and the thing that Agilists do when they do unit tests, or as we say, microtests. We like the word, and we use it all the way through the course. It's worth saying for a second what a microtest is and what one isn't. Microtests are very short. Now, shorter. Mm, shorter. Right, there you go. Short. Microtests are typically half a dozen lines of setup and maybe as many as 10 lines of actual uh, code in for a particular test. So we're talking ridiculously tiny. In fact, so tiny, the word micro starts to be involved. Okay, so if you think about unit tests, you know, you've got micro tests and they're here, they're still unit tests, but they're very different from the great unwashed masses of unit tests that are out there. Micro tests are intended to be very simple, and this is important. In fact, it's more than important, it's critical. The reason that TDD works is because the tests that we're producing are cheap. They are cheap, and they're fast, and they're plentiful. And that's what makes it work. If they're pricey, if they're at all difficult for us to work with, or play with, or test with, we don't want them. They are not part of test-driven development, which is focused down on these little tests. Uh, Microtests, I might say never, except I've learned that never is a very long time. Microtests usually don't do things like leave the box, okay? So they run in one computer right in front of you. They don't uh, reach out to touch email. They don't go to the network. They don't even usually go to the disk or to the database. Why? Because I want them to be very fast and very precise. That's why. In fact, 
they're so precise, you might say they were, you know, micro precise. So you get the idea of what we're talking about. We use the word microtests to distinguish it from all the other possible things that might be unit tests but aren't any good for TDD. My last thought, two requests. When you go out there on the net, and I hope you are going out there on the net to study up on TDD and get yourself prepped and get new ideas, because that's certainly what all of us do. When you do that and you read from an Agilist about unit tests, go ahead and translate in your mind. They don't mean unit tests, they mean micro tests. And think that way and you'll get a whole lot of confusion right out the door and you'll be back where you need to be. Oh, and the second thing, if you really like some guy who's writing about TDD out there and you really want to encourage them, give them a holler and say, hey, look, unit tests is way bigger than the set of things called micro tests. So why don't we use the term micro tests instead? Okay, it's GPAW. I hope that helps. It's micro tests and I'm done.